Uh, I'd like to say that uh, John McCain and I are both veterans of Vietnam. His experience is, uh, is a legend. And I was a very young Marine uh, patrolling those jungles and mountains that he flew over. And uh, even though I have disagreed with much of what John McCain does politically, I have always held him in, in great admiration for his courage, uh, both his, his physical courage and his moral courage, and his attempts over the years to, to extend a hand across the aisle and reach the compromises that allow us all to move forward as a nation. And uh, I, I have always been a Christian and will always be a Christian to him for that. President Obama said, John McCain and I were members of different generations who came from completely different backgrounds and competed at the highest level of politics. But we shared for all of our differences the fidelity to something higher, for ideals for which generations of Americans and immigrants alike have fought, marched, and sacrificed. We saw our political battles even as a privilege something new, an opportunity to serve as stewards of those high ideals and at home and to advance them around the world. We saw this country as a place where anything is possible and citizenship is our patriotic obligation to ensure it forever remains that way. Few of us have ever been tested the way John was. was are required to show the kind of courage that he did. But all of us can aspire to the courage to put the greater good above our own. At John's best, he showed us what that means. And for that, we are all in this debt. In his statement, George W. Bush wrote, some lives are so vivid, it is difficult to imagine them ending. Some voices are so vibrant, it is hard to think of them still. John McCain was a man of deep conviction and a patriot of the highest order. John McCain passed away, as you know, on August 25th after a long battle with cancer. And I appreciate the opportunity to, to read both of these statements uh, about a very wonderful America. back and we have one of our other guests and why don't you share with the viewers your name and you raised a very important uh, issue and I was trying to make sure I heard it and I understood it so why don't you introduce yourself and then get into that because I thought that was very important. My name is Jacinta Knapp and I am from Rancho Palos Verdes, California. My group basically is called uh, Democratic Roundtable Council as well as Millennials. Uh, enfor resistance enforcers and our mission basically to get everybody engaged and all the community members to understand their rights and to understand their civic responsibilities. Um, because of that, they, one of the uh, issues that is really, really prominent in our mind right now, it is the importance of showing up in the polling um, to, to cast your vote this November 2018. It is extremely important because um, 
I believe in the democratic values. That is the values that are uh, prioritizing the needs and the issues that we all care about as human being, basically, from education, from our climate change that is endangering our lives, um, all the, the living beings in this world, and all the way to the senior citizens for their retirement, for their health care, and for, um, for, for their livelihood until they the end of their natural life. Wow, well, you know, you, you raised some very important issues for the viewers, and, and I would like for you to elaborate before I let you go, because you, you said a lot of stuff. And the first thing I would really like for the viewers to really understand about uh, today's meeting and what uh, the effects of today's meeting should bring forth is something you touched up on, and that is called the millenniums. Yes. How are we gonna get to the millenniums and really uh, engage them to where they can see that this is really an important time in history and how their voice needs to be heard. Well, before I, before I uh, touch on that um, elaboration about the millennials, first of all, I would like to quote what President Obama says. Democracy works, however, we gotta want it. And not just during the election year, but all the days in between. Right? So we have to understand how important the democracy is to us, to all, to our country, to all Americans, and essentially the world. Because if you do not um, care about your democracy, we're gonna lose it. And can I give an example? Absolutely. Okay. An example how critical it is um, to, 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 uh, to defend our democracy. Uh, I was born and lived about 20 years of my life in a country that was founded based on democracy, but they almost lost their democratic values due to corruption and due to nepotism, due to um, dictatorship, of that country, and that country was actually Indonesia, and uh, it took them, it took them almost. Uh, they're still struggling right now, for for that matter. Uh, but about two generations, they're still trying to rebuild because they almost lost their democracy. So, for the young people, basically, they are very intelligent. They're very engaged, they're very enthusiastic, and they're very passionate. But the main important thing is it, it doesn't really matter what party you belong to, what they care is the real issue. From education, from climate change, from environment, from uh, good jobs, right? Just to be able to survive. These young people, that's what they care. So we need to um, emphasize on the issues that matters for them in order for us to be able to engage with them and in order for us to be able to move them. Now the other thing also, they're so intelligent that I, and they're so passionate that I basically would like to emphasize on them to run for office, you know, run for any leadership. And I, one message for the, for the young people, basically for me, in order for you to be a leader, it has to start from the heart. In other words, you need to be able to care about other people, about other issues other than your own or your, or, or your family. And if you don't have that, I don't care how intelligent you are, I don't care how, how high your education is, you're not gonna be a good leader. And you're not gonna be an effective leader, especially for a nation like United, United States, who is supposed to be the leader of the world, where we actually look upon United States for any issues of the world. And speaking of that, and I'll, I'll close out with this because 
There has been so many relevant issues brought up in this meeting today. And so many incredible ladies here. I mean, yes. you know, we had from uh, candidates to attorneys to uh, city council people. I mean, it was unbelievable. Right. Please share with, your, with the viewers that what the administration that we currently have, what is the impact that if we don't pay attention, the outcome could possibly be? Well, if you, if you don't engage and you don't pay attention, number one, you will lose your right, your constitutional right and your human right. That is number one, very important, right? Everybody should have their right and we, we should protect those rights. And without those rights, you will lose your, the value of your constitution that was written and fought for with, with their own life, actually, uh, uh, you know, by our founding, founding fathers, right? right? So if you don't get engaged, that's the one that you're gonna lose. However, it's even worse. It's even worse because then if you don't have a constitution and you, you don't have the democratic values, there is no sovereign nation of the United States. And it will become, this is what I call it, it will become United States of America Incorporated as opposed to sovereign nation of the United States. Hi, this is Alan and we're back with another guest. Yes. So why don't you share with us what your thoughts were on today's program. My name is Kathy Clement and I came as a guest of Lila White. She recruited our entire table. I think we've got our 100 people almost lined up. I'm just, as many people are, um, appalled at some of what's happening. And I know that you can't, it's not good enough to be appalled. It's, right. you have, you got to get out there and get the work done. So right. I'm going to be making new friends. New friends. <laughs> and, and it was really interesting because I, I was... Observing your table, and your table has so much energy, and 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 shared a lot of input with the uh, with the guest that was here. Why don't you share with the viewers really how did your table come together with so many people and wanted to make it a point to have their voice heard on the strategies uh, that they shared with the rest of the the group that was here today. We have been friends for longer than you've been alive. And we get together regularly and we talk about what's happening, you know, locally and nationally. And when this came up, we thought, now, we can, we can put our words into action. So we just enough talking. Let's get out there and do some doing. Doing. And so what would you share? Let the viewers know, because this is going to go out to the viewers. We want the viewers to know how important this midterm election is, not just by what is being articulated in here, but really, what is the real push that people must come to realize about the importance of this election? People need to realize that their vote counts. There's a, was, there was a cartoon and illustration that Lena showed of a few people with I vote stickers on and a whole mass of people who said, I didn't vote because my vote doesn't count. No, your vote does count, and I think the last election proved that. So we need to make our voices heard, whatever, however you vote. It's important to vote. Well, let the viewers know. Yeah. I'll let you go. <laughs> Tell, we got to get out there and vote. And what would you share with them in closing? Um, I think Jesus said, if you don't vote, that's a sin. So if you don't, don't, don't just take it from me. It's from on high. You're required to vote. Well, thank you so much. Have questions, but I want to say something because I think Dr. Richard is after. I'm under agenda you see the DNC, DFCC, and DCCC. So what Janet is talking about was the DCCC, which is a congressional piece, and they focus just on people that are House of Representatives. Yeah. And then the DF
focus on the UF signature, and that's all they focus on. The DNC is the umbrella of them all, and they focus on uh, Dr. Beach. They would be focusing on congressional, Senate, and the gubernatorial, and school board, et cetera, et cetera. So it's important for us to understand who those different people are. The other thing I want to do before we wrap up, on the website, we will have, have listed all the upcoming primaries across the United States, and we will have all upcoming fundraisers that will be taking place in our communities. And so the two that are coming up right now, one was Stacey Abrams, who's run, who, if she wins, she will be the first African-American governor in the United States of America. Jackie's going to that, Beverly Morgan Sandals, Janet, and then we can extend the invitation to two or three more people that reach their goal. He will go as their guest. And then Dr. Gavin Newsom will be here on the 25th of October. And I just want to say this, I have to say this. If, if that, if, if life's if table, I'm very proud of her table because that, they're, you're really at your 100 over there. So I'm proud of that table. So I give you a little pat. I mean, they're there. Uh, I want to say this, because this is important. Under the Women Leadership Vital Voices, the beauty of us is that we have our voices so we come together on common causes. So when we were in the primary of the gubernatorial race, we were, I can't even say we were split. Most of us were, most of the team was going with John Chong. And a small, tiny, tiny percent was going with Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom. But what I loved about all of us is that we worked together and we supported each other. And that's what we want to embrace with all of us. And so now that Gavin has won the primary in the general, the whole team is, is saying, OK, I will write the checks, I will step up, and I will do the work. Because it's not about us individually. It's about our collective teamwork. And that's the beauty of what we do as a team, as a leader. Leadership means one, but many people make that. And that's what we want all of us to do because we're all leaders. And, and just know that we don't always have to agree, but we understand the end result and that we want a better city, state, country, and county. So thank you all. Have a good day. And if you have We're back and we have the, I'm gonna call it, master ceremonies here today for, for all intents and purposes. <laughs> and uh, why don't you share with the viewers, first of all, your, your commitment to being here today in light of the passing of, of, uh, of Senator John McCain. And then also uh, what you shared with, with the participants and the guests and those that were here as to the rights that you saw as a young man that you understood as you began to apply what you learned as a young man, and certainly what you know is needed now with the current administration and positioning ourselves for the election yeah. in November. Yeah, well, it's interesting. That's a lot to cover. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, I was very honored to uh, to come here today. You know, I share uh, the fact that I was uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran, I was a young Marine in Vietnam, of course, John McCain's story uh, is, uh, as a prisoner of war is, is well known. And we share that as a veteran. Uh, we didn't share political views uh, at all, uh, but uh, I did admire that he made many attempts to reach across the aisle to come to a compromise and an understanding for critical issues and uh, understood that, that holding on to one point of view was detrimental to getting something done for the rest of us. And I, I always did admire that. And I, of course, we all admired his courage uh, uh, when he was prisoner of war. And I think a lot of people don't understand the horror of what he went through. Um, I, I'm, I'm always honored to be part of the political system. Uh, I grew up uh, in a small uh, Kansas farm town. And uh, so 
the distance uh, that I traveled from, from there to here is not only geographical, but also in broadening my understanding of what the world is and, and, uh, and how we can each individually make an effort to change it. And I think that's so important to always realize, uh, I have a lot, several guiding principles, but one of those is to always make an effort to reach out and create opportunities for people that don't have the chance to uh, have those opportunities available to them. You know, I think all uh, people ask for in this world is an opportunity. Nobody's asking for a guarantee, but only a chance. And uh, that's, that's very important. Wow. So I, I have two uh, pivotal questions to ask you before I let you go. One, first and foremost, as a person who was a part of the Vietnam War and that era and all of the the evolution from the 60s, the mid to late 60s, and and the, the pathway that was paved to bring President Obama into prominence for us. What do you feel? And I'm asking your feelings because you have had a lot of experience with the world, with the challenges we have in our current administration and what you see going on. As an African-American man who's been worldly, what thoughts and concerns do you have in seeing what you've seen and now experiencing what we're currently experiencing? Well, you know, I, I have to say on, on, on a personal feeling when uh, President Obama was elected, I, I, I was moved to tears. I, I was just, uh, I was with a group of people gathering people. And the emotion that poured out of that room was just extraordinary. And I, I had hoped that my mother and many of the people that, that I knew when I was young had been around to see that moment. They are the ones whose sacrifices made that moment possible. They are the ones who, who suffered through the, through the darkest days of, of Jim Crow and slavery. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I just wish there was a way for all of them to, to know about it just that moment, that time, and then I was fortunate enough to also be there for his inauguration. And, I, I, you know, as, as a man, well into his middle age at that point, uh, it was just something I never thought I would see, never thought I'd experience. And uh, it, it gave, uh, you know, I felt every inch of the American that anybody out there does, but it gave me a deeper, deeper feeling and a, and a much stronger pride than I had ever held before. Uh, it was finally absolutely true that your child could grow up to be president. And always before, it was just it was just a slogan, and, just and, something people would say. And interestingly enough, since you were at the inauguration uh, and you had a chance to get the the feeling of that moment, that historic moment. Uh, why don't you share with, again, the viewers, since I have you here, and, and I'm trying to capture all this so people can really understand the pivotal point we're at in history. We can lose what we've gained, or we can reconcile how important today's event actually is and take action, because that's gonna be my last question for you. But why don't you share, again, your personal uh, feelings and experience with seeing President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama to represent the level that came into the White House after many, many years of only having one other couple that represented the model and standards that we as Americans, not just African Americans, but Americans should bring before our young people as an example. Yeah, well, let me just, let me just answer that question by uh, addressing the contrast between President Obama and Michelle Obama, who represented this country in, in, a, in, in, in such an extraordinarily dignified way, such a thoughtful way, uh, in, in a way in which every American should be proud in, in, in the President and the First Lady of the United States. I always, I never saw them in which I did not feel tremendous pride that they were in that office in gratitude that they were representing the country in this wonderful, thoughtful, dignified way yeah, that we assume a president should. Uh, 
Today we don't have that, and, and it's sad. Today we have uh, someone who is vindictive and vile, uh, who is racist and misogynistic, uh, and um, uh, and I want to be very clear about that. I, I'm, I'm not going to mix words about that because uh, uh, the record uh, proves me right. No, and, and you're absolutely right. That, that's why I really wanted you to share with the viewers by you know sharing with them a man of your experience because you're not just acting on sound bites. You're not acting on the sway of what media is doing. You're taking this from a man who has a long history and has experienced all the facets of what has made uh, America great. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's very clear. Uh, yes, uh, this is what has made America great. And when you talk about making America great again, we always have to talk about, you know, what, what part of that. I've always had pride in, in being an American and uh, uh, growing up in this country and, and being allowed. Uh, which my my mother wasn't and the previous generations being allowed to take part in the American experience and to share in the American dream. So you know to say we're making America great again, it is it is that the greatest social experiment in the history of man because it is an ongoing experiment and we should always seek greatness. It's not recapturing something that never was because we were always seeking to be great and we are still seeking to be great. And uh, I, I, I want people to understand that, that one of, the, one of the wonderful things about this country is that we make mistakes but we actually try to correct them. And that goes on from from slavery to uh, to the interactions, the, the often horrific interactions with Native Americans, to the imprisonment to the of the Japanese, to denying rights to women. It goes on and on. But each one of those, the country made its attempts to correct those terrible, terrible mistakes. So it's not make America great as, again. It's continuing. For America to seek greatness. Well, in closing, and I'm gonna let you go because I can stay here all night because I think it's so relevant for young people uh, to understand the history and really how to fire up that base to get involved. Yes. And certainly that was one of the uh, course of action for today's meeting. So why don't you share with them again your name, uh, your commitment to seeing a good turnout in midterm and closing out with what this uh, event and this meeting did for you today. Well, I can just tell you very simply, my name is James Reynolds, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Uh, but uh, my message is very simple for November, is vote. Get out and vote. Uh, and vote for whatever uh, party you want to vote for. Uh, that's the important thing. The important thing is to vote. The important thing is to use this, this gift that we are provided in this country that your opinion can be expressed through your vote. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you giving us this interview, definitely. Yeah. And you viewers, continue to stay with us. This is Alan Shea with Our Society, and we thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Well, I think my closing remark would be very, very simple, that each of us make a difference, and that we can't look at the big elephant and say, this is what somebody else needs to be doing. We need to look at where we are in our space right here and right now. And what we have presented and what we're working on, Women in Leadership Vital Voices, is saying work in the space you are in and make a difference there. And we all are little bit of pixels in a big portrait. And it takes many pixels to make the picture. And if we play our role as that pixel, we end up with a portrait that we all would be pleased to look at. And that would be my closing remarks. Play your role as the pixel. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And certainly, viewers, we appreciate you watching our society. So thank you so much for joining us today. And this is Alan Shea signing out. Thank you.